18 hours in my Chrysler Pacifica, all the way from Texas. I made it. We're in the middle of nowhere, Illinois, and guess where we're going to visit? My buddy Kyle from RR Buildings, who builds these giant shops. I think they're called pole barns. I don't know, we'll see. This is gonna be a cool video. Let's get going. All right guys, I was already gonna be in Illinois, so I thought I'd go visit my buddy Kyle. If you don't know Kyle, giant, giant Instagrammer and has a huge YouTube channel and builds these massive buildings, totally different than what I build. So I thought on the build show today, we could check in with Kyle and see what he's building. Let's see if he's around. Yo, Kyle. Hey, what's up, Matt? Man, this pole barn is huge, Kyle. Okay, we'll go ahead and just before we keep going, <laughs> pole barn is, is, that's not what this is. So a lot of people call these pole barns, but this is more of like a post frame. And I take it like post frame is the next level. This is like we've evolved. Yeah, so, so pole barn is actually a little derogatory for you, isn't it? I always feel like it is, yeah. Like I feel like we're building something a little better than a pole barn. I love and it. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you're here, so maybe we can show you what the difference is and what really goes into a post frame, because as you can see, this is my shop. It's but huge. It's, it's super useful for everything, man. I got a workout space, I've got yeah. storage. You've got your RV here, you got a, a yeah. office, you got some shop space. Yep. Post Damn. frames are super versatile. So I got a bunch of cool buildings I can show you that kind of show the array of what you can do with them. Yeah, because this could be shop, but you, I've also seen you on Instagram and his awesome YouTube channel building whole houses with the same right. type of construction, right? Honestly, it's the craze. Everybody calls me. I would say nine out of 10 calls are for barn dominiums. People wow. want houses and their shops, and they want, it, they want these large expanses. You know building houses, everybody wants their large yeah. rooms. Yeah. With our method of construction, there is no limit. There's no header requirements in almost any situation. <laughs> these are massive, man. Yeah. So let's go to a couple other Kyle's jobs where we're not quite as far along. We'll show you how these are built. Let's get going. All right, Matt, so it. this is the first building that I'm gonna show you because it's in this like frame stage. And Man, this is really pretty, Kyle. <laughs> I like seeing this. Totally different than a stick frame, right? Totally different, but yet a little familiar, right? I mean, yeah. we've got some wood, no sheathing, which is interesting to me. Yep, yeah, uh, we won't be sheathing anything. Laminate, did you laminate these two by sixes to make this? Triple ply post. So those come from Ohio Timberland and they glue lamb them and you'll notice that the bottom is a finger joint treated. So this is all gonna be a CCA uh, 0.8, I do believe it's a 0.8 treatment. Oh, that's that higher treatment level too, yeah, isn't it? Yep, and that's going, the center ply goes all the way to the top. So you'll notice at the top, um, that ply goes almost all the way up and then there's a finger joint glue lamb. Uh -huh. And then they also run some rivets through. So that's, and they tell me the rivets are only to set up the glue. Just like when you're doing, you know, some trim or something, yeah. the glue's gonna hold. The glue's gonna take care of it. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Oh, that's wild. Yep. And then, is that a post base I'm seeing? Talk yeah. to me about that post base down yeah. there. Yeah, so that's something that a lot of people, well you can see this is, this is what we cut off. And honestly, it's only because for me, it's a lot easier. This is how our post base are gonna come. Okay. Which is a W bracket. Yep. So we've got an ear on both sides and those are wet set into the concrete. They got rebar that's um, attached going down 18 inches. And when we get to like something like this, this is a door jam. We just cut off an ear. Instead of buying a universal jam uh, bracket that only yep. has one ear, yep. I just use these cause they're easier and I get it out of my way. But this is so it can have a nice trim a trim finish going For down. Garage door kind of That's thing. right. Now I would think that in the old days, or maybe even currently, they would sink this post all the way down and wet set it in the concrete, and the, and the wood would go straight down in. Right. 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 So that goes back to the old pole barn days. You know, okay. I think this form of of construction goes back to the Egyptians. They were the first ones to do post pole pole, pole framing. Barns or post and frames. typically, most builders are going to sink this post four foot, whatever your frost or whatever your footing desired, you know, depth is. What is your frost line here? Uh, we're like 42 inches. Okay, so you go down four feet and you're good. Yeah, we go down four foot and what we do is we do a, an 18 inch, this is pretty standard, but- 18 most, inch concrete pier. 18 inch full concrete, so there's no backfill, there's no, it's just a full ready mix pier 
with the brackets. And, um, you know, that's not going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And do you have to worry about termites at all in this area? No, we don't get too much. To, we don't, we don't, there's a couple areas that do have termites, um, but never anywhere that we've built. Yeah. You know, okay. yeah. Yeah. So then we're press treated posts. Yep. All the posts get set vertically. And how, I'm assuming because I see come alongs here, that you're not super worried about getting these perfectly plumb. Is that true? Or, or are you it's, really? It's not true when we stand them. Like, we build everything on the ground. Mm -hmm. So this whole wall was built on the ground. Oh, and then you stood it up? And then we including, stand it up. Including in your? Everything. Uh, yep. What are these called again? These are girts. Girts. So, okay. yeah, these are our two by six girts. They're attached with a 20 penny nail ring shank. Ring shank, um, okay. And we do that so because this is where. Good holding power. Yeah, this is where our shear strength with the, the steel diaphragm that we'll eventually install. That's why we don't have sheathing. Mm -hmm. And actually, this guy's not, this guy's not nailed yet. Yep. Um, we're still in the process, don't judge, okay? We're, we're still working. <laughs> but when we stand this, we plumb it with like a, with a, with a level, uh -huh. 12 foot level, and get it, get it perfect by the level. Okay. But then once the roof is, the frame is done, and we go to install our metal, then we make sure that everything is straight and plumb on all four corners with these chains. That's what we're using these chains for, is to plumb this wall up perfect. Got it. Okay, and then we'll straighten out our roof system get it perfectly square, and by aligning our fascia with a string line mm -hmm. or a laser, depending on if it's windy or not, yep. it makes all these walls perfect. Got it. So, you know, when you look down them, it's going to be, it's going to be good. Straight. Yeah. Now, why are you switching from two by sixes on this here to some two by, it looks like 10 or 12s? Uh, as you go up on those girders. So that's What's actually, that's actually a header for a porch. This building is going to have a porch. Ah, okay. And so, just because it gives us so more, framing. yeah, our rafters are going to attach to the top, and we just need more room for some trims and details. It's just, you know, we just found that to be a better way to go, just to use a 2 by 12 But, you know, you don't have to worry about when we put a window in here, like there's going to be a door right here. We don't have to worry about headers. Yeah. Because there's no, there's no, there's no bearing weight anywhere. No bearing weight anywhere. Yeah. So it makes it very easy to yep. do anything. Uh, any shear issues though when you have this giant opening like this? You're worried about the, I guess because one wall in, in the back is not, doesn't have any openings, then you're not as worried about shear. Um, honestly, no, not really because we, you'll see over here we do this, uh, this is like kind of something that not a lot of guys do, but this double X brace. This corner bracing you're yep. doing with the X. And that's more or less a temporary permanent bracing. When the steel is installed, we're going to get all the shear that we need. And okay. you know, that is why we're using like a full hard 29 gauge, which I know you're in Texas, you guys use a lot, 26. Mm -hmm. Our framing is closer and it's engineered for that. Like we wouldn't even need any framing um, probably right. to get the kind of wind loads and stuff that we need. Yeah. 90, 110 mile an hour. Makes sense. Yeah. But we kind of just go above and beyond. This was a detail that came from a commercial building that we did with an 80 foot wide building with a 30 some foot opening. They, the engineer came up with this double X and we said, you know what, we're just gonna do it on all of ours for now. I love it. It doesn't matter. It's yeah, not we'll expensive. Just do it. Nope, it's not. It's cheap insurance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then your trusses then, you've got on this triple ply post, your truss is sitting in yeah. that ply. Well, let's go on the inside. You can that, see it a lot better, man. It's bringing man. that weight down, isn't it? Kyle, so you got these trusses that are bearing down on yes. here. How does that work? So what's nice is, you know, back in the day when guys did pole barns, they would take their truss and they would attach it to the side of the pole, yep. put a couple through bolts, but that wasn't really strong. Mm -hmm. With these laminated columns, you'll see that the center is notched out. And what that allows us to do is to drop that truss directly in the center of the post and get a through bolt connection. There's nowhere it's gonna go. No, it's so super it's, it's a perfect bearing straight down to the foundation, which means every That's awesome. everything, yeah, is bearing right on a foundation point. Super strong. Yeah. So Kyle, when, when I see these buildings being built in Texas, mm -hmm. this same skeleton tends to be steel, right. you know, red iron. Uh, but what I think is really fascinating about your, I mean, you're in a much colder climate. Right. It's, you know, often 10 degrees outside. Right. And this may be a shop, but this could turn into a house. This could, this could really be anything. When you have a wood framing like this, you have insulation value. Right. Uh, and so this wood is around R1 per inch. Uh, this ends up being an eight inch thick wall. So at the wood connections, even though you've got some thermal bridging, mm -hmm. you still have insulation value. Whereas in Texas, yeah. if it's all steel, you gotta do some real work 
to not have that condensation issue. And I think that's why it's so prevalent up here. I mean, you'll see steel frame, but it's mostly commercial, mm -hmm. where maybe, you know, I don't know if they're not worried about it. I'm not sure. Yeah. But in our, in our industry and what we do, if I were to do steel, it costs more money, and I don't think you're going to get as, as good of a product, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing that's fascinating about this is this looks like this is relatively quick. Would this take three weeks or so to get here or four weeks? No, uh, probably about five or six days. That's it? With two guys, me and one Dang. other guy. Dang. Yep. So posts for a day or two, you probably drilled those with your uh, Kubota Yep, machine. one day. It took, one day us, to... it took us less than a day to dig the holes, pour the concrete, set the brackets, you know, lay out the site. Yep. Uh, we usually spend a day just kind of getting things going, getting all the prep work, cut all of our lumber, get all of our marks. The next day, you know, all these walls get put up, and another day to do all the trusses, um, another day to put the steel roof on. So, you know, that's that's basically Golly. in in good conditions. That's what it takes. Maybe five or seven work days. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. And then you're gonna how tell, talk to me. Well, I guess we'll see it at the next job. But tell me about how you're gonna skin this building. Yeah. So this is gonna get a house wrap. Mm -hmm. You know, for mainly just so we don't get air penetration because steel is pretty leaky. Yeah. Um, and then. Yeah, full steel exterior on this one. And are you insulating also in here sometimes? This will get an R19 fiberglass bat. So we use like a four foot wide. Roll. By 40 foot roll. And that's going to get tacked up to these girts. Okay. Um, and that fills that cavity real nice. Man, that's awesome. Yeah. And then how do, you, how do you finish off an air seal between whatever your, your floor is gonna be, because it doesn't have to be concrete necessarily, right? Yeah, it doesn't have to be concrete. So that's something that a lot of, you know, this detail is something that I don't, I don't see done. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people will run their exterior grade board and then they'll pour their concrete right to it. Mm -hmm. Honestly, that does cause problems because concrete shrinks. Yep. Now you've got a place for that air. Yeah. What we do here is this is gonna be an insulated cavity. Okay. And the, the concrete will actually be about here. Uh, so this is go. somewhat insulating the edge of the concrete. Yep. And your backfill is going to come on the outside. And your concrete, this job will get two inches of foam. Got it. So they'll be putting two inches of foam under here. And then they'll be pouring the concrete. And this creates nowhere for the concrete to lock around a post. It's going to be floating. And will that, that foam will come in by a foot or two? Or no, just... they'll run the whole, they'll probably run this whole floor. In foam. Most likely, Super yeah. smart, because yeah. then your slab is insulated, too. Yeah, yep. Oh, I love it, man. Yep. That's a great way to yeah, do it, it's, Kyle. It, it is a pretty, it's a very, I would say value-wise, cost-effective. Yeah, smart yeah. detail. I really like this building, Kyle. This is really cool. Talk to me about roof insulation. How do you insulate in those roofs? So this will get a ceiling. So this, the, you know, we'll run a ceiling underneath these trusses, and it'll get a blown-in fiberglass relatively inexpensive and you yeah. could go huge on insulation if you, you could want. put an r40 in there if you wanted no problem and that'll also have uh ventilation you've got yes. a ridge vent going it looks like you'll ridge have vent soft, and soft vents. vents yep yep which is a key thing most people say kyle how do you not you know get condensation on your roof deck yep it's you got to have the attic space the same temperature as your exterior you got to have good air intake and outtake you're good to go yeah no condensation yep really cool man i love it you got another one in another stage just beyond this, right? Yeah, that's right, man. I'll go show you that. Let's go see that and one. And what's cool is it's a totally different application than just a workshop. All right, guys, on the RR Buildings World Tour, another one of Kyle's buildings. Kyle, this does not look like a post frame. Are you telling me this is similar to the job we were just at? I mean, it's really the exact same frame. The only difference is this one's on a, a full concrete stem wall, so we don't have any of those piers. Oh, this like is an even better detail. Yeah, that's a great detail. Um, and this is a fully sheathed building because we don't have the metal diaphragm. Ah, so okay. So because we didn't do that and we're You've using- you got like a wood siding exterior with some stone accents. I mean, it looks like a residential building, really. Yeah, that's exactly right. We wanted it to sit in because we are in a residential setting, but this will be a future music store. All right, let's go look inside, shall we? Oh, I'm looking forward to seeing this, Kyle. I love this stage of construction. We can really see what's behind the walls. Yeah, I mean, it, it's at a good point because we've got all the rough framing done, but it's still, it's still opened up, so you can get a good feel for it. Yep. All right, so first off, I'm seeing, Kyle, this is your post framing right here. Yep. And I'm assuming there's another one in the corner right there. Yep. Same basic spacing as what we Eight had foot. before. Yes. Yep. But this one's now fully sheathed. So are there are there Z girts on there as well? So we've got the same. Um, I think this one was a third. No, this was a two foot spacing. So we went with a two foot spacing because we're doing a full four by eight sheathing on the on outside. Top of that. Yep. So gotcha. we wanted to lay out properly. 
so yeah, this is this is really well constructed. It's got an over you know, abundant amount of shear strength on it the way it's installed. Because we still use all those 20 penny nails. Oh yeah. Even more connection points per, you know, the wall is it's just crazy. And closed cell foam, I'm assuming. Three right? inches of closed cell foam. Oh, yep. so you got like our 21 walls in there. Yeah. And that's continuous except for where you've got your posts. Yep. And that, that closed cell foam is actually probably giving you some rack strength as well. Oh, for sure, yeah. It's gluing it down together. Yep. And then uh, I'm seeing some eye joists. Uh, so you actually have kind of loft space on this house too, right? Yes, yes. There's, there's a bunch of loft space. And like I said, it's going to be a future music store. So we're standing in the garage, but then above it is going to be like a workshop area mm -hmm. where he's going to be able to do internet sales. And then this is going to be like the main, you know, I guess the main... Main place. He's gonna have all space. his yeah ukuleles and and these uh, high ceilings. I love it. Yeah. But this is cool to see now. So now instead of like we had before, where you had um, you know an 18 inch pier with a sauna tube that was poured. Right. Now you've got the stem wall. Did you do the concrete on that? Concrete. I don't do concrete work. I mean, we just work with the contractor to make it. You know, we always got to do a minimum of an eight inch wall mm -hmm. with a two by six column. If we go to a two by eight column, we jump it up to a 10 inch wall. And once again, these are the same brackets. Okay, so there's your metal brackets on either side. Yep. Your post frame, and this is that same triple ply laminated like we saw, is dropping onto the bracket. I like this detail though. With this stem wall around, it's really residential construction, kind of. It really is. And you know, right now this isn't done. I mean, you, some of your viewers might be like, well, why aren't they gonna insulate that? That will all get encapsulated spray foam in there with later. spray foam also. Yep. Yep. We just had to do some construction first. Um, but yeah, there's no reason that this exact build style could not be a home. Yeah. And it has sure. been, you know, we, we do that. Yeah, and then you're framing the inside and this could get standard sheetrock right on top of this. Yep. And then you use some engineered lumber to go ahead and frame these interior walls. Right. So this room is gonna, when you walk in here, it's gonna look like a standard room in a house. Yeah. Talk me about the detail though for this, for this, um, ceiling in here. So how did how did that ceiling go on and how did is you insulate before or after that ceiling went on? So we typically will especially because this is a blown in fiberglass, we got to have something for that fiberglass to you sit, know, on. sit on. So we'll install the steel first and then um, and the reason we use steel, a lot of people are like why would you put steel on your ceiling? It's going to be more teeny, it's not as good as drywall. Honestly cuz value. That we had that installed in a day. Less wow. than a day. And it's finished. It's finished it's painted. completely. It's, it's painted. Done. Exactly. <laughs> and it just gives it another level of detail. It's not just like flat that. white drywall. I like that. That looks great. You could do drywall in there too if yeah. you wanted to. Mm -hmm. But honestly, it'd be more money and you'd have to paint it and it would just jump up the cost of the building yep. overall. That's right. All right, Kyle, I'm putting you on the spot here. But do you mind giving us some idea of cost on this building? I, I calculated that you're around 2,000 square feet on the first floor, plus you've got loft. So maybe this is 25, 2,700 square feet of finished space. What do, you, what do you think a building like this would cost? You know, that's kind of tough number to always evaluate because there's so many different accessories you can add. Like these big garage doors are $20,000. Yeah, they're expensive doors. That's a, that's a big cost right away, but you can do a lot for about 150 finished a per square foot. You're gonna get a really nice building like this. Um, I'd say that's a pretty, pretty safe number. I mean, that, this immediately jumps out to me as a very cost-effective, great value for what I'm seeing here is thoroughly well-insulated, well-air-sealed, and nicely detailed. I'm impressed, man. So here's, here's the thing that I'll say is that the reason post frame isn't for every project is when you get into cut-up roofs, when you get into a lot of ins and outs, when people want these very you know detailed or technical-looking buildings, yep. it gets more costly. Yeah, it's got to be more you, simple. Yeah, if you stay in a box, if you you know maybe you got one offshoot, that's where post frame shines. Yeah, it needs to be a rectangle or a box, mm -hmm. and if you can do that with a simple gable-style roof, oh, it's, it's it's so cheap, super good value. Yep, I did do a house. I'll say this, fully finished. It was eighty-five bucks a square foot. <laughs> That's crazy. It was as simple as it can go, but that's the thing. When people want value, it's there. It's impressive, man. Anything else to see on the uh, RR Buildings World Tour I got Tour one today? more I'd like to show you, and it's fully finished, and I think it will definitely take you away from your post-frame thought into like what you can do, I think, you know, with post-frame. So. Yeah, I'm not calling these pole barns anymore. This is impressive, man. This post-framed building is, uh, is really not too different than residential framing. It's just a little different mindset. And 
the other thing that I, I mentioned in the last building is I love how everything lines up. I know now that I saw your last one that this post is lined up with your truss, which is lined up with your other truss. Everything's perfectly lined up, so we've got eight foot centers all the way around the building, which makes a really good value. Yeah, and you'll notice no headers on windows or doors, man, because there's no load bearing point at all. That's right. Very cool, man. Let's go show. Uh, let's go show these guys the last project. Let's do it. All right, Kyle, what's next? What do we got here? So this is a project that we finished this year, and it's it's called the hunting cabin. Uh -huh. And I know it doesn't look like a cabin, Matt. Everybody on social media is like, dude, I've never seen a cabin this big that looks like this. But it was just, that was the goal of the customer's wishes. They wanted a hunting cabin on their property. I love it. It grew and grew, got bigger and bigger and I think cooler and more cool as we went. So I'm pretty excited to share it with you. But once again, this is the exact same construction at the core That's wild. is everything we've seen. And it doesn't look like it again. I mean, you got a fireplace on the side right at the gable end, and then you've got a, a porch on the front with a turn gable. So this doesn't scream post frame to me. Right. Let's go inside and have a look. Let's do it. Kyle, I like this porch, man. This smooth cedar is beautiful. But before we go in, I yeah. gotta I gotta compliment you on the detail I like down here. Okay. Check this out, man. Raised pier for this, and then you put it on a Simpson or maybe a MyTech post base. Did that come pre-black already? No, that's something that we thought maybe wouldn't look as good galvanized, so mm -hmm. we just uh, used some Rust-Oleum paint, painted it. It looks great, man. And now that wood is elevated by this metal base. Right. It's up off the concrete, which means this is cedar. It's going to last a long time anyways. Yep. But it's not going to wick water on that end grain. That's yeah. a great detail, and that smooth cedar. Oh. Uh, S4S, man. It's hard to come by. It's not cheap, but... If you work with rough cedar and then use this, you'll never go back. I love it. Yeah. I love it so much better. Let's go inside. Yeah, let's go in. All right, Matt, what do you think of this cabin? Oh, man, Kyle, I love it already. You know the first thing that comes to mind? What's that? There's no drywall in this place, is there? Uh, nope, no drywall anywhere. That makes me smile. Yeah. I love it, man. Is this pine all pre-finished when you, yep. you put it up and walked away? All the pine uh, is pre-finished from the same person in Michigan. It's a woodworker shop, and they did all of our railings, our trims, our pine siding. Everything was pre-finished, except for the stairs. The stairs did come unfinished. We had to finish it after the fact. I don't know why, but they just don't do stairs. Weird. Yeah. Now, you made quite a few videos on this build, didn't you? Yeah, there's 51 videos now, I think, in total <laughs> of this project. So you could see from start to finish, from the foundation up, get built. We'll, we'll link to, uh, to that series on Kyle's channel here, but Kyle, I love this, man. Having a really simple building uh, that feels good with real materials, Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Um, would you mind showing me behind the scenes? Like, do you have a mechanical room that yep. we can see? Yep, because this, is, kind of this is all radiant concrete. So one thing that the client opted out of, which, you know, good or bad, or maybe they should have or shouldn't have, was they didn't do an air conditioner in here. Okay. So I told them that in my experience, a building that's built like this, and honestly, this is probably one of the tighter buildings I have. Ooh, they probably that. won't need an air conditioner. Yeah. They just need a dehumidifier. If they that's keep right. the humidity out, they'll probably be okay. Wise words for Texas as well. This is your garage space, by the this way? This is the garage space. Look at this, no drywall in here too. All that yeah. same 29 gauge metal. Yep, easy, clean, bright. You know, no maintenance. You could hose it off if you needed to. That's right. It's and this is on a stem wall. So once again, it's a full footing wall going around the perimeter. I love it, man. Yep. It's great. And yep. my guess is this would probably mean fire code as well, because that metal is not going to allow that fire to transfer to the wood above. Yeah, I, I'm not 100% sure about that, but I would expect uh, we were able to do it here. So it might have been just fine, you know. And uh, mechanical room right here. Yeah, I tell you what, oh, the guys that like... did it. Uh, they did a really good job. I love my mechanical rooms. Look at this, man. This is nice. So this is, uh, looks like Upinor Pex coming up through a radiant system on the floor. He's got his sleeves in. Yep. Um, why are we pink on the... Uh, uh... That's got the glycol filled, so it's not water. Okay, that's in so case this there is were an issue, it's not going to freeze. Yeah, so this has a much lower freeze point than water. Yep. And then he's got an Upinor system here, it looks like, for all his controls. You know, Matt, you're much really more nice. nerdy than me on this stuff. I look at this, and what makes me happy is clean lines. Yep. Everything is, you know, nice, clean solder joints, which 
that's important to me, and if the it plumber, works good. The plumber yeah. did a real nice job. Yep. And this is your boiler, which has a direct vent to the outside. I also like that you plywooded and painted this uh, yeah. room so you can connect up, and that was done. Yep. Really wise to put that up and paint it ahead of time. Yeah, just simple mechanical room, but it's nice and clean. Simple and beautiful building, yeah. man. We got anything else to see? So we got one more, and it kind of takes you to where post frame is still the key, key, you know, component of it. Uh huh. But it's as residential as it's gonna get. All right, let's go there. All right, Let me see the next one. Kyle, the final stop on the RR Buildings GMC train here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? This uh, this is actually still going to be a post frame style, Matt. Uh huh. But it's a 100% residence. There's some really cool, unique features about it that don't typically go along with a post frame. So if you want to go take a look, I'll show you, man. I like it. So this is our fourth one. This video is getting long, but thanks for hanging with us. This is really fun. We saw, just to recap quickly, we saw the skeleton, which that, that job was going to be a, a true shop space, mm -hmm. right, for, yep. that, for that farmer. And then we went to a really cool hybrid job, I would call it. Yep. But I love seeing the spray foam and understanding how the building worked. And I could start to see how it could be residential. And then the last job we came from felt um like residential except that there weren't bedrooms it was more like a big party party barn party kind barn. of space yep but this is a true house true house all right let's go man all i right. can't wait to see it yeah now are you going to want to see everything or just the mechanical room well we could always start in the mechanical room okay. you know that's my favorite yeah i know i know <laughs> all right well we'll step into the uh the garage oh like this kyle every man's this is, domain right this is a nice garage yeah i really like this yep lots of storage nine foot doors those look huge yeah that's right so these are i think these are 10 by nines or nine by nines and that was for maybe a future motorhome my mom and dad wanted to get a motorhome be able to pull in a little travel trailer again yeah. kyle i love the metal uh white ceiling it just brightens the space yeah. up it feels like the right choice and this isn't drywall I'm seeing on this lower eight foot or nine foot, is it? Nope, nope. This is all, this is one of the stand, I wouldn't say standard, but we probably do this three out of four different buildings. We'll do a three quarter BCX. So this is a sanded grade mm -hmm. plywood and it just, guys like the ability to hang stuff everywhere. It's Love durable, it. yeah. cleans up nice. That's yeah. wonderful, man. Yeah. And I like seeing your dehumidifier in here too. Yes, that Keeps was something. Keeps the garage nice and uh, yep. smells good in here. Doesn't have any, uh, Additional moisture, keeps it nice and dry. Yeah. Well, we're in the Midwest, man. We get those snow on your vehicles. You pull in here, the water goes to the drain, but there's That's still right. all that moisture. So Floor drain. Yeah, getting rid of that additional air moisture makes it a lot more enjoyable. Let's go see the house. Yep, let's do it. Kyle, this looks like a regular house. I love it. This looks fantastic. I mean, it is a regular house, Matt. The only real difference is that the skeleton, the interior bones of the exterior walls are post frame. I guess that's right. And this is a really cool detail. That cupola, bringing that light right into the center of the house. Yeah. I love it, man. I don't know if I could call that a cupola that size. It's, it's yeah, you it's, know, it's, it's a monster, whatever it is. Clear but, story windows up there, yeah. Yeah. The goal was just to make this space open uh, and post frame lends itself to that because our lack of load bearing walls throughout the middle, like everything you see here was built after the shell was up. That's right, all these, all these walls I'm seeing to these bedroom spaces are all non-load bearing uh -huh. walls. Exactly, so they could be easily remodeled, changed, and like I said, all done after the building was dried in. We didn't have to have anything. So it gives us a lot of uh, turnover time to get quickly, uh, get to a point where everything is dried in and guys can start doing mechanicals in the basement, which is, yes. Basement? Yes, we have a basement in this post frame. Really, you have a basement under our concrete slab here? So we're standing on a concrete slab that's radiant heated, but we also have a basement, and that was, you know, because we do get tornadoes and stuff, uh, yeah. and so with a residence, we wanted to make sure that we still had a basement. I would love to see the basement, Kyle. I knew you would, that's where the mechanicals are. <laughs> Let's go. Alrighty. All right, Matt, this is the basement, and Ooh. this is where you, probably get the most excited. Look at this nice setup, Kyle. Look at that nice Lockenvar boiler. That is a really nice piece of equipment right there. Propane coming in? So this is all natural gas. Okay. Yep. And then, boy, your plumber did a nice job on this copper. You know, people have called me an anal builder, Matt. This dude was very anal. Which Ooh. I can appreciate. Everything was very well done. I like it a lot. Now, is this radiant? You said radiant heat upstairs, but I'm seeing plywood. Right. 
So have you heard of warm board? Yeah, this is warm board. Yep, so that's inch and an eighth plywood warm board and that's got that um, aluminum surface on it. Yep. So it radiates that heat up real nice and keeps it you know, from being lost, I and guess. And then there's a hardwood floor on top of that. Yep, and then we've got a hardwood floating floor. Got it. How have your, par your parents installed this how many years ago now? This has been three years probably. And they like in the warm board? Love it. Does it, it. work really well for them? Yeah. It radiates that heat nicely? Mm-hmm. Very cool. I mean, yeah. the building in general is super efficient compared to any house they've ever lived in. Yes, it's yeah. new. Yeah. I will say this is not spray foamed. Really? So this okay. is this has an R19 fiberglass batted wall. Okay. We did spray foam the entire cupola area, and uh -huh. that was because we didn't have a lot of framing um, depth right. to get really a good R value. We mm -hmm. didn't think our 11 bats would be good enough, sure. so we put a three inch up there. But the rest of it's all fiberglass. Man, that's crazy. So it's a post frame building. Yeah. But we have a standard basement, standard mechanical room. Yeah. I mean, it looks to me like this is a regular house. You can do anything with post frame. It's really impressive. Kyle, I gotta say, the tour today, seeing these four projects from the uh, the bones all the way to the basement, uh, what a really, really fun tour. Cool, You're doing man. some great work, man. Well, I appreciate that. I'm glad um, you came up for the tour. And you know what? I, I'm super impressed with how efficient and honestly how cost uh, effective this style of construction is. I don't understand why more people aren't doing this. Well, I think it's becoming more and more popular. Because, like I said, I think before, probably 70 to 80% of all calls are to do this. People want this because it's cost effective and they can get the square footage they want for the price they want. This is absolutely 100% different than the post barn that I think I said, at the, or what did I say? Post pole barn. Pole barn, pole barn <laughs> at the beginning of the video. This is a post frame that is super versatile, man. Super, super good work, Kyle. You Thanks, and Greg buddy. are building some great houses, some great shops, a great value, and lastly, super efficient, super well insulated. And I'm not sure if you've blow it or tested, but I bet you'd get a pretty darn good blow it or score with a house like this too. Maybe a future video. <laughs> Guys, if you're not already following Kyle, incredible Instagram feed, posting some great stories from his jobs all day long. And at least one of the buildings we were at, he's got a series of videos uh, that we'll put a link in the description for below so you can go see Kyle's work. Go subscribe to his YouTube channel now. Super, super impressive builder. Doing some really fun content. Kyle, Thanks, really appreciate the tour today. You bet. Guys, if you're not following me, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show. Kyle, total afterthought, but the conversation after the video ended, I felt like we had to record. Yeah. Um, talk to me about the drywall in this house. And I know you've heard on your channel people saying, oh, those buildings are gonna move and shake and yeah. change, you probably would crack drywall. What's right. been your experience in this house? Well, yeah, that's, that's the number one comment I get. Your building is moving, it's gonna blow away in the first windstorm <laughs> because it's, it's atypical to what they're used to. Right. This, this building right here is three years old now and we framed all the exterior walls the same way we always do, with two foot on center wall girts, which are running horizontal. Yep, just like we saw at the beginning of the video. Exactly, and this has zero drywall cracks. I always check back in, and I always ask, have you found any drywall cracks? Because I obviously want to make sure we're doing it right. I want yeah. to make sure that we're going to build and deliver you know, what we promise. And after three years, zero drywall cracks. I can't say that about traditional two-by lumber all the time because yeah. there's so much of it in a house that it has so much potential for movement, you yeah. know? Yeah. So. Dang, Kyle. That, I, you guys had, I knew you all needed to hear that. That is awesome, man. Yeah. Well-built buildings, man. Really fun day. See you guys. <laughs>